Hey everyone, welcome back to Geeks Fun. And today we have another social media misunderstanding of the UK drone rules to iron out. I'm thinking of starting a new series of myth busting videos regarding the drone rules. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you want to see it. Today might sound like a bit of a rant in some places, but please keep in mind that I am absolutely delighted to see people debating and discussing the UK drone rules more online at the moment. The more discussion, the more understanding that we all get of them. Following our live show yesterday explaining the major changes in the UK CAA drone code, much of them for the good of the hobby, frankly, excluding that horrid remote ID thing. We've been contacted by a number of viewers who are concerned about social media posts that they've seen explaining camera drone flyers now need a spotter in a similar way to how FPV flyers have needed one when wearing goggles. First things first, it wasn't mentioned in our show because nothing has changed. The exact same wording was already in the drone code previous versions and it's been there for a long time. Look, here is the new code and here is the PDF of the previous version. It is precisely the same. Nothing has changed. How many people have been arrested for not having a spotter when flying a camera drone since this has been in the code? About the same, actually, as the people who've been arrested for no spotter with an FPV drone and goggles, which actually is in legislation. I'll give you a hint, it's less than one. When reading the drone code, there is a fundamental error that many people are making at the moment, apart from not going back and checking if the same text appears in older versions, that is. At the very start of the drone code, it explains in the code itself that it's based on providing advice and guidance to allow people to fly their drones legally and safely. It is intentionally a mix of legislation and guidance. It is a code, not a rundown of the legislation. If you follow the drone code word for word, you are flying under what the CAA term a presumption of legal drone flight. That is the entire purpose of the drone code, to keep us flying safely. This was the instructions originally given to the CAA by the government in terms of their role as airspace regulator in this instance with the drone code. Interpret legislation in a way that can be followed by hobby drone flyers. However, what this means is that you have certain sections such as VLOS that are worded to cover the most beginner of beginner drone pilots and how the CAA would advise they fly. This topic on flying a camera drone upon first reading sounds like a very harsh new law, which of course it isn't. It's been in the code for a very long time and in fact it doesn't even say what many people are reporting it said does. Flying using first person view, FPV, some drones and model aircraft are fitted with cameras that provide live video to devices such as smartphones, tablets, and video goggles. Flying by watching this video is known as first person video. If you want to use first person video, you must have an observer with you and follow the rules above for flying with the help of an observer. It isn't saying that you cannot look at the screen or explain any percentage split between the two that might be acceptable. It states that if you want to fly with the screen, you need a spotter, as in just the screen. Apart from being guidance, it's also kind of correct. If you fly only using your screen, you are of course by definition not keeping your drone or the airspace around it in sight and therefore would likely fall foul of the legislation. This guidance is specifically worded towards people flying relying on the screen too much, something so many of us have done before. People need to start looking at these documents in totality and not picking out little sections and repeating them as if they are the law. As I explained before, the drone code itself actually tells you it is a mix of guidance and law. It is the same situation if you write to the CAA, if you were to email them, etc., and ask them to confirm what the situation is on this. In terms of VLOS and looking at your screen, they will absolutely give very similar advice and guidance. This guidance will also differ depending on the audience that they're actually responding to. In terms of striking the legal balance of looking at the sky versus your drone controller, that really is a decision for every individual to make based on so many factors of each flight. Things like the weather, how many people are around, proximity to buildings and even trees will all make an impact. You also need to consider the size of the drone and of course your own experience in flying. There is a fascination where people seem to want a very precise answer to something which simply does not have one. And actually, if the airspace regulator was forced to give legal, precise answers and develop legislation to cover every single situation, we'd actually find that what we end up with is the ability to fly less and less because those rules would become more and more prescriptive. 
The CIA themselves have stated this in several interviews on this channel. For instance, during training for a GVC certification, you'll often find different companies will provide their own take and advice on screen time versus sky. It is absolutely essential that we're monitoring both our drone and the surrounding sky to keep an absolutely safe handle on what's actually happening. However, depending on the flights you are taking on the drone itself, it's also something that would certainly require checking on the app, especially as so much key data is now displayed on there. As per police and CAA interviews on this channel many times over the past years, if you want to fly with the presumption of 100% legality with your drone in the UK, then certainly following the drone code to the letter will absolutely get you there. However, it does not automatically mean that flying outside of this guidance will land you in trouble or mean that you are flying in breach of any legislation. Also, think in terms of enforcement on this one. Are you now expecting police to record you before arresting you to prove how long you were looking at your screen for? Think in real world terms about some of this. The code isn't there to catch us out. It is there to give key guidance to the cert to certain people. During our live show review of the highlights of the changes to the drone code, go check out the replay if you missed it. We focused on the areas that are actually fundamental in terms of legislation and also policy and permissions that the CAA are providing above and beyond legislation. We did not repeat guidance that's been in there for a very long time. Whenever we make content on the drone rules here on Geeks Farna, we're always keen to stress that we're explaining either the guidance or the legislation. We like to try and make those two things clear as it is presented with our own interpretation in there as well, of course. That interpretation and guidance provided by us is based on countless hours of research, the many interviews with police and CAA, plus countless more hours discussing these things with both of those bodies and other government departments. One of the key takeaways from all of this research that I have found is that you really do need to closely inspect what is being presented to you and how that should be interpreted. Is it law? Is it guidance? You then need to decide where you sit comfortably within that. For instance, a couple of years ago, we had the new AMC published by the CAA, which included advice on VLOS stating that you should always keep your drone close enough to tell the orientation. It's also in the drone code. This is great advice in terms of keeping you 100% legal. For instance, a couple of years ago, we had the new AMC GM published by the CAA, which included advice on VLOS stating that you should always keep your drone close enough to tell the orientation. I'm sure you've seen this on social media as well. This is great advice and guidance in terms of keeping you 100% legal. However, as per our video, the ultimate VLOS guide, you can actually fly further than this and actually further than the drone code guidance and remain perfectly legal. When that topic kicked off on social media all that time ago, we had the CAA on the channel who confirmed it was indeed guidance and it was legal to fly further than that under the right circumstances, etc. That isn't to say CAA guidance is, is not absolutely important. It is. But that guidance is created to include all drone flyers. So Danny from Argos, who picks up a drone for the first time and needs to be kept safe until he develops confidence and experience, will need a harsher interpretation. We have a full walkthrough and breakdown coming up on the channel, which will include looking at which parts of the drone code are legislation and which parts are advice and guidance and giving my own interpretation on those parts. So if you're new here or you want to make sure that you get that, make sure that you are subscribed to see when the video drops. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments below and we will answer them and make any videos that we need to on particular topics which are being asked about often. If you're still watching the video now and you're one of my awesome regular viewers, please do hit that like button because it really does help out and it also makes me smile. Sean out.